Welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dalles, Oregon. Mrs. Hewitt, instructor. We are heading into week four. It is going to be another word project. It'll be the fourth chapter, set up very much like last week. You're going to have your objectives. You've got some support materials, but not as many because you supposedly learned some of it last week, but you can always go back to week three and look at the support materials there. This video won't have as much depth to it because we did two videos last week. This is going to be just a one video week. But remember, you can always go back to week three and look at things if case you didn't quite get it all or don't remember it between the weeks. So you've got your video, which you're going to be watching. You've got your student data files for download, so you're going to need to do that download thing again so that you have them. I would suggest you put them either on your desktop or, like for mine, I can drag and drop them to my desktop, or you could do file target save as, because you're going to need them for this week. So once you get them kind of drug over, and on the desktop you'll have them available to use for the week. I put that up and I'll switch back here. So you need to make sure you have those available. Remember you cannot insert any file from inside a zipped folder. You have to pull it out first. And let's look at what you're going to be submitting. You're going to have your learning project. We'll walk through here in a second. You've got your upload form. You have to go to week three to get it again if you didn't keep a copy and you think you need it or you didn't need it last week but you think you need it this week. Remember, you don't have to do it for fonts, colors, or themes. Everybody's going to fight that battle. It's only if you run into something other than fonts, colors, or themes when you're using a different version of Office. And then your application project. You have your journal again. Remember that has to be at least 100 and actually I think that one's 250. I think it's your application project question. Nope, it is 150. See, my memory didn't serve me right. And then you're going to have your forum and your forum reply. Your extra credit upload, you can still do last week's extra credit up until Saturday. Or you can do this week's extra credit, kind of your choice. And at the end of the week, you have your checklist. So now let's go look through the book part so you can kind of see what we're going to be doing. So let's get our book kind of back under the camera. This light sort of shines in the middle there. Yeah, we're just going to have to live with it. So I paper clipped it so I should be able to reach in fairly easy and open this week's chapter. It will be the research chapter. This is probably one of the most useful chapters for students. A lot of times you take classes and they say, write a paper. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I want it in MLA format. Sure. Whatever that is. And students are lost. And nobody really seems to teach how to format it. Well. The nice thing about this chapter is it does teach how to format it. So you should be able to know at the end of this chapter of how to format a paper. I do suggest you read the materials. The final paper over here. Now, this is kind of tricky because it looks like it's just a paper. I mean, how many of those have students turned in between high school and college and whatever? Probably a lot, but it's not just a paper. A lot of the places in it are going to be actually live links. Okay, I tried to focus it a little bit more. It doesn't really want to do it. It's pretty fine print and it's having trouble kind of getting it. But you've got the same paper to look at in your book. Some things to look at. You'll notice this is double spaced up here. You'll notice this is centered with a space under it. You'll notice these are indented. You'll notice there's not a big gap between paragraphs. It wants you to su suppress the space after paragraphs. That's a direction that is missed often. When I get to this mark over here, I click on it electronically, and if it's just typed in there, like you've looked at this page and typed it, it's wrong. It's major wrong. Because the whole reason to do this project is to learn the shortcuts and the tricks that Word can teach you 
and help you with. So you could put this in electronically a special way, and when you get done to the end, it'll just create your bibliography for you magically. So you want to make sure you do that. Got to get a footnote in, got to get it in the right place, and then you've got to come down and put the correct footnote in here. Notice the line, the indent, the wand, how it comes down. It has a number citation at the end. Again, that's going to be a live link. Moving on to the next page, there are actually some words that get changed on that page that you have to go in and edit at the end of the paper to change them. And a lot of people kind of quit before they get to the end. And then comes your bibliography. Notice it's on her work cited. Notice it's on a third page all by itself. It should not show up on the bottom of page two, even though there's space for it. You'll notice it has what's called a hanging indent. It's pushed in here. It's had some editing done to it. It's been turned into plain text, which means that if I click on it, those words are individual. It doesn't just come up as a blob anymore, all highlighted together. Obviously, if it does, that means you've missed a direction. Points off. It's had words changed in it and edited. There's a lot of work to putting this together, but if you follow it step by step, it comes together really nice, and it's a really good learning project. If you try to skim and scan and say, well, I'm going to wait until, you know, 20 minutes before it's due, and I can type that up no matter what, and you just try to look at this and put it together, you'll be redoing it. Because if the bibliography doesn't work, you don't have the sources in there, you haven't done any of that, then why did you bother to do it? I, you're just copying a paper they gave you, so why? This isn't a typing class. This is learning to use the tools in Word. So you'll be redoing it. So make sure you follow the directions exactly. You come in here, it talks about MLA format. I often have students say, well, I didn't even know what that was. Now I do. So now you know about it. It's got some document settings it wants you to change. I suggest you do them. Walk your way through it. Soon after you get started, make sure you save. It has you do formatting marks. We'll talk about that a little bit. Formatting marks are a curse and a blessing. They're a curse because I find them really hard to type around. They're a blessing because they can let you find mistakes. So what I do is I type without them on, and then I turn them on at the end to check. You can check every paragraph, every couple paragraphs, full paper, whatever. If they don't bother you to type on and you have them on, and like it says to do, that's fine. But if it just drives you nuts to have them there, feel free to turn them off, but then turn them back on to check. I will be turning them on when I check your paper because it helps me look for spots of errors. That one space between sentences is now the current standard. If you learned to type back in the era I learned to type in, it was two spaces between sentences. Sorry, we're outdated, not anymore. I still have trouble with it sometimes. But that's something to work on making sure you don't do on this paper if that's how you originally learned. For some of you that are a little bit younger, you probably didn't learn that way. And you're okay. It's going to walk you through how to modify the style of the paper. It's going to take you through some of that step by step. It's pretty elaborate. You need to make sure you follow it very carefully. This is where you're going to be adjusting some of the line and paragraph spacing. If you don't, you'll come up with a big gap between your paragraphs, and I score you down for missing that direction. They still use styles, even in a paragraph in a paper like this, so you're going to work with that as well. I got two pages turned, so we'll kind of back up. But it just kind of takes you through more and has you create a header a good skill to learn and you'll be using it a lot this term so make sure you learn how to create a header put in text putting in page numbers closing the header and typing the actual research paper now all you're doing is copying this one but it's always good to read about what you consider for doing a real research paper because at some point you're going to have to do one if you haven't already. So this is going to help you with some of that as well. Then once you enter the course name, you're going to use their name they're using. You don't have to put in our course. You're going to go ahead and put this in. 
because you're copying it. Um, if requested by your structure, you can enter the own. I'm not in, in I am not requesting it. Just go ahead and leave it as is. Um, I'm going to keep working through the paper. We're just going to kind of flip some pages here. Now, you get this far and it's finally saying save the document. I hope you saved it long before you get to this page. I'd save it when you do like the first thing and then just keep control S, control S, control S. Every time you do something that it works, control S. Try the next thing. If it botches and it goes like, oh, I've got a disaster. I can't fix it. Close it. Don't save. Open it back to that last good save. And that's a good way to recover from that, oh, no, that didn't work moment. Because they do happen. And that's part of learning. You're going to have mistakes. You're going to have things that don't work right because you're in a class to learn how to do them right. So don't be surprised if you end up retyping something or having to close it, not save, and reopen and read the directions again. I always tell students, read before pushing mouse. You'll save yourself a lot of time and effort if you actually like read the whole thing, know what you're doing, and then go back and do it step by step. Because if you just step, 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 you don't know what's coming. But if you read it all, you know what's coming. And it's easier to do it. So that's a hint to make things easier. So you're going to keep going. We're just kind of filling in the rest of this paper. You're going to create an autocorrect entry. So you're going to set that up. That's a great skill to learn. The autocorrect stuff that if you always type the DAOs with T H E going T E H because you hit it wrong or you have A and D instead of and you end up with A D N. That's one of my favorites. I love doing that one. Not so much, but I do it often anyway. It's really nice to set that up as an autocorrect, and then every time you make the mistake, the computer just goes really again and it fixes it. You don't have to stop and do anything. Now it's going to have you click in here, go into the file here in the back, and it's got you setting some things up in here, so you're going to want to make sure you do that correctly. You get all of this set up, and to kind of continue through, you're, now you're going to start working on the citation stuff, and how to insert a citation and create source, really, really important directions. And a big thing I grade down on if you don't get this stuff set up right. So all of this goes through here. Footnote reference mark. I mean, this is all big stuff that's going to really cost you if you do not take the time to read through all of this step by step carefully. And then you're going to edit it. And then it's going to talk some more about working with footnotes and endnotes. Word count. It's going to move you into page breaks. This is going to have you do some more citations. Have you edit the source. Because sometimes we don't have all our information when we go to type the paper. And so we have to go back and edit it. So you're going to learn to edit it some. And you're going to do some page breaks, applying a style getting alphabetical order for your citations down here. Create a biographical list. Oops, I guess it's out of view. I'm pointing, but it's not helping you any. So now we're starting to put the, the, the bibliography, the works cited. So you're going to revise it. And this is a big one where people miss this proofreading and revising. They're like, I'm done. No, you're not. Modifying a source, you've got to go change something. And then this is how this comes up looking. I should just move this whole thing this time because this is a big spot that people mess up with in through here. Notice how it comes up this all gray when I click on it. If I get all gray, you've missed some directions. And then they'll get it switched so it's not. So you need to, to work your way through how to convert a field to regular text. This is a big deal because it doesn't have a great big red letter here. People just go skim, skip, next page, and you're not ready until you've taken care of this. I would say that's missed maybe 50-50, and that's a lot of errors. 
So it walks you through some more things to do on this page. And it's got a few more. It's taking you through how to find text, which is always nice to know. It's going to take you through some other tools. It's going to have you go back through and insert a synonym. Synonym means same, so this is where you can say, oh, I've said that word so many times, I need to use something a little bit different. Those types of things, sort of like a thesaurus activity. So you're going to have to do a synonym, synonym and insert it. Spell check, grammar check. Then they're going to have you kind of work with some custom dictionaries, looking up information. Now, I'll tell you the honest truth, this looking up information, because it's tied into like being in the internet. Sometimes that doesn't work out quite as well as you would like. If you have trouble with it, it's not a real graded part, but it's nice to know how to do it if you can get it to work and if everything's, you know, the stars are aligned correctly for you that day. Because then you'll be able to have um, a built in kind of tool to go look things up without having to like go to a Google page. We're kind of saving a document, we're kind of changing a few more things, you're changing some color, you're changing a few things, and we're having you kind of change the page color. So you can just play with some of these things, even though they may not be things that I see you've done, just going through the steps so you learn how to do them is important. Printing again, you're not going to be printing other than to make sure you know how to print. Exiting Word. And then you come up on your chapter summary. So that will take you all the way through your learning project. You'll go ahead and submit your learning project. You'll kind of skip through these yellow pages. Again, if you want to do extra credit, it is always the, in the labs. Those are the ones you have to do for extra credit. And they usually give you two or possibly three choices. For in the labs and this is where we're now down to the application project this is your application project okay so this is again back to deciding if you're taking notes if you're underlining what you need to do with that when you're done with this project it should look a lot like the paper you just did for your learning project i.e. It's an MLA format, you've su suppressed spaces, you've done indents, you've done um, inline editable citations, you've done a footnote, you've done a bibliography, you've changed your bibliography to plain text, works cited I maybe should say because that's what Word likes to call it. You've not gone on on the internet and found like a bibliography creator. You've done it within Word because Word is built to do that for you. So you've used that tool. So on this one, and again, you have the three choices. We'll look at the first one in more depth than the others, but then you can also do those. So you're as a student, you're doing a computer class, and you've got a brief research paper. So they've already taken all the notes for you. They've done like gone and gotten the research, written the notes page up. So basically your text for the research paper is in a file called 2.1 Computer Notes. They are just the notes. So now you have to make it become a research paper. I can remember piles of note cards around my house when my kids were doing research papers. I can remember taking notes on big sheets of note you know, regular notebook paper and cutting them apart and taping them together to get them in the order I wanted before it got typed. Those were the old days, the hard days. It's much, much easier now. So those notes are already ready for you. You don't have to go out and research anything or find notes. But also don't just turn me the notes because if you turn into me the notes, well, what good was that? Would you turn a real, you know, like a real research assignment in was just a pile of your notes? Hope not. And then, and this is, this is that download that I provided in Moodle that I downloaded and pulled off on my desktop in a zip folder. So you'll go get that, pull it out, get ready to use it. I'm not asking you to get anything for extra sources. I mean, if you feel like you need to, need to I guess you can. But that's not part of what I'm asking you to. 
but I want you to include a footnote. So if you don't go out and get anything, you're going to have to create something that's in the notes page as a footnote. If you want to go out and get something, you can, and you can use it for the footnote as well. It's kind of your call. No footnote, no good grade. That simple. You do an autocorrect. You can set up the default dictionary if you want to. And add one of the source's last names to the dictionary. And then basically you're down to using the concepts and techniques presented in the chapter. So organize the notes, set them up in paragraph form, indent, suppress the space, set up MLA documentation style. So I'm going to see the citations built into the page. You're going to be live and active. Be sure to spell check and grammar check. Make sure you set up the bibliography works cited, kind of the same difference there. Um, do not just turn it in to me with nothing at the end. Sometimes that happens and that's not a good good grade. And then you're down to the part two, once you've got this all done and saved, you're down to part two, talking about, again, question answer format. So you're going to set up the question, you're going to answer it, set up the question, answer it. You need at least 200 words when you answer these, so you may have to actually think a little bit if you're coming up short. Do a little brain sprain and do a little thinking about it because you've made a lot of decisions. You've used a lot of techniques that probably a lot of you didn't know before this, so this is your time to talk about it. If that's not the one you do, which is about laptops, tablets, and desktops, and you move on, there's one about POS terminals, ATMs, and self-service kiosks. And then again, when you get the collaboration, you start to move down to this number three. You are the full team. There's nobody else working with you. And it is probably the hardest of the options. So what else do you need to know? Well, I had one question. Last week we mentioned the um, prop document properties. I didn't mention it in the video last week because I wanted you to figure it out. I wanted you to use the resource I provided you, look at look it up in the book and find it. But if you didn't find it, I want to show it to you this week. So I have a page that I've just created. It's nothing really fancy. It actually was some notes I took on this cool garden thing. And so what I would want to do to do document properties is I want to go to File, and I want to go over here and I want to add some things. So I want to add a title. Garden idea. Takes or stuff stuff it's about. So garden um, etc. So you can set that up. And you need to add you as an author. Mine comes up with this DEPD, which is because it's the way my computer's named for my other job. So I would be sure to add my name in there. That is really important because if I see it's being done by who knows who, Sally Smith, and you're not a Smith, I'm going to wonder where in the heck that paper was done at. And I may not grade it until you tell me some information about that. I can also see when it was started, when it was last printed, when it was last modified. So in other words, this was done all pretty quick together because I didn't do a lot of modification on it. I can open some additional properties down here. Sometimes it will tell me the computer that's being used. I see megabytes. I see pages. I see your total editing time, although Microsoft's gotten funky with that. I sometimes see one minute when it really wasn't one minute. We had a big uproar over that a few years ago. So I've kind of learned to be a little careful about that. I don't trust it anymore. But I do expect to see the name. I do expect to see possibly some tags. I do expect to see your name down here. However, people do that and then they just go up and close it and think they've, they're good. 
Nope, you've got to go back here and you've got to save it one more time. If you don't save it, that doesn't save with it. So why should you do that? Think about a business. I'm working in a company. There are 200 people in the company. I type up this paper and I email it out to three people to look at. They look at it. Somebody really likes it and they think five more people should be able to see it too. Um, help with the decision making process, etc., etc. So they mail it to five more people. Those people mail it out and mail it out. And pretty soon it finally gets to somebody that can actually make a decision. And he looks at it and says, well, whose idea was this? Where did it come from? Who do I go back and talk to? Well, he has no idea or she has no idea where this paper's been. It's sort of like a mystery paper. And so if you have put your name on it, it's really easy to go back and claim. Person goes in there, they look and go, oh, that's who wrote this. I'll just run on down to their office or email them or call them and we'll discuss their paper. So it's a really good thing. It's not a copyright, but it is taking ownership of that paper and kind of saying, this is mine. I created it and it's really handy to know. When you download and take papers from other places, they often come in with that information and then that sort of tells you where the paper came from if you want to track it back. So there's some real practical purposes there. Also, if I ever get a paper and I'm not sure whose paper it is, it's a really nice way for me to pop back. If I've opened two or three papers and it's like, oh, wait a minute, whose is whose? Now let me sort this out. I could pop into document properties and go, oh, this is Sally's got it. And it's really handy. So that's a requirement on the application project. Hopefully you did it last week. If not, you probably heard about it. Now you can do it from now on. It's a requirement on every application project and it is a four point loss flat off the top. So it's a fairly substantial point loss if you do not do it. That one pretty well takes you through the week. If you have any questions, be sure to send me an email.